If you ever worry about how you come across in video and wonder whether or not you're being annoying or just not sounding as confident as you wanna be, this is a video for you because I love teaching this stuff and we are gonna go into all the things. I'm gonna teach you four main keys that will help you sound way more confident and awesome in video and five little sneaky monsters that can ping in and once you know what they are, you can totally show up like a champ and better the way that you come across, whether it's Zoom, whether it's YouTube, However it is that you wanna show up in this digital world where it's screen and cameras, I'm gonna help you be able to do that. Hi, this is editing Gia from the future. And I just want to set expectations from the get-go that I am not going to be digging into the five monsters in this video. It is a topic I definitely wanna get into, but this video is long enough as it is. And I just really wanted to focus on the four horsemen. That's all. And if we're just meeting, hello. I'm Gia Goodrich. I am a professional photographer, content creator, and teacher here on YouTube because I just love giving people the tools that I've amassed over years and years of experience. And once you know what they are, it's really so much easier to show up on video. And this is something I get a lot is people will say, oh, you're just such a natural. Like, how would you know? Like, it's just so easy for you. And that is bullshit. Here's why. Any skill that we have, like you see somebody who's an amazing tennis player, you see somebody who's great cooking and things, they're all learned skills. The problem is we don't really treat showing up on camera as something that we learn and get better at. We just assume that we're gonna show up and magically be wonderful, amazing. And that is totally not the case. If you think about the people that you really love, you think about the people, whether they're YouTubers or maybe it's a boss, the way that they show up if they're emanating with that confidence, you really feel like you're connecting with them, I guarantee you they've been doing it for a long time. And whether or not they were acutely aware of these things I'm gonna teach you today, I bet you money that somewhere subconsciously along the way, they've learned these lessons. That said, you can go this route and see if just doing it long enough, you pick them up over time, or you can watch a video like this where I can condense all of this stuff into little lessons and help you show up better. So real quickly, before we dig into it, I just have to ask you a huge favor. If you were a kind, generous human, which I know you are, would you please like this video and then send me a comment? I love reading them, but it also both of those things really help in the algorithm, help my videos get seen, really supports the channel. And if you do that, I will love you forever, like you for always. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Let's get into the video. First thing we'll say is if you are starting from scratch, 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 you wanna know how to look better in places like Zoom and YouTube video, check out this video right here that covers all sorts of things with lighting, angles, background, all of that stuff. It's a really great primer. Then check out this video right here if you are wanting to know how to look better if you have glasses because glasses are a specific lighting ninja -rific thing that you have to do. I hope you have a notepad or something because I really recommend you take some of these notes to help yourself think about this as we go because it's gonna be a lot of information, but I promise you can handle it. First are what I call the four horsemen. Now these are four key things that come up that can really knock your confidence, really make you sound annoying and not show up in the best way in video. These are fillers, irritants, modifiers, and vocal stuff. And we're gonna go into each of these in depth. Let's start with fillers. Fillers are the words that you add when you're thinking about something that really detract from your meaning. These are words that you hear often, like, like, so, right? Things like that that you add maybe in the middle of a sentence or at the end that really are just filling space. If you are really confident, and you can think of some examples from popular culture, like Obama, for example, is maybe the most confident seeming public speaker around that I can think of. And you'll notice when he's thinking about something, he just pauses. Our sights were set a little too high. But that's what we did. Now, he kind of takes it to a 10 because I can't even listen to him when he speaks without changing it to two times speed or three times speed, which let's be real, I do that anyways. But what I love about him is it's a great example 
of just pausing while you're thinking, allowing yourself to be a little bit slower, not using those filler words. Those filler words aren't necessary. And what they do is really indicate to somebody that you're not feeling confident and comfortable in where you're going. For example, for me, I say so like a lot. And many times when I'm recording YouTube videos like this, now that you know that you'll probably catch that I start a lot of sentences with so, it comes from this place of just trying to link ideas instead of just letting things sit. A lot of times what I'll do, see, I almost just said it there. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will start a sentence with so, and then I'll catch myself and then I'll re-say it. Now this works if you're doing something like this where I can do multiple takes. Otherwise, it's just something to be aware of when you're really speaking live, like in a Zoom meeting, for example, to just be aware of the rushed energy because this is where a lot of filler words come into play is when we feel rushed, when we feel nervous. And if you take a breath and slow things down, that's when you can have a little bit more of the awareness of whether or not these filler words are coming into play. Number two are modifiers. Now these are the words that you add that can actually detract or undercut your meaning. And we do these a lot, saying things like, you know, or maybe, or kind of, sort of. These are things that, especially if you're socialized in the more femme category, right? The well-meaning adults in your life thought you were gonna grow up to be this woman that was gonna do all these sorts of things. The way that we're socialized in a lot of cultures is to do what's called emotional hostessing to make sure everybody's okay, people aren't too threatened by your opinions and things like that. What happens is that we internalize this, and let me just say, even if you aren't socialized that way, you might still have some of this stuff come into play if you've been perceived as somebody who is a little too intimidating or things like that. But what happens is you internalize that and instead of just saying, this is what I believe, this is what it is, this is where I'm going, this is the great idea that I have, you end up saying that, but then unwinding it a little bit backpedaling a little bit to soften the blow. A great example is saying something to the effect of, I'm really excited about this podcast I'm launching. I think it's really gonna do great. That's me saying it with my full confidence. Another version of that using modifiers might be, I'm kind of excited about this podcast, you know? I think that it might be good. And you can see the difference. My body language changes and there's just no certainty in what I'm saying. What you wanna do is try to identify these places where these modifiers are sneaking into the equation and rip them out like a weed in your garden that you have no need for. Although it kind of makes me sad for weeds. Like I feel like they do get a bad rap. Although I don't garden, so I don't know really what they do. And I digress. Modifiers, get them out. And stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you how to really incorporate this and get a sense of how to really take this stuff out, how to be aware of what your go-tos are. My example of a modifier that I go to a lot is, you know, or right. Now this is, I think, a little bit of my East Coastness is I will say, da 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 da, right? Da 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 da, right? And that is this kind of verbal seeking of affirmation. I'm wanting to, I almost just said it then, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's me wanting to get your approval. Now this might be a very human thing. We all want approval as we go through everything, but that neediness, that seeking for it, strips away our confidence in how we show up in video. Finding those modifiers, plucking them out, all the things. The next one are irritants. And these are the ones that just get ya, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I just said right. Ugh. These are the ones when you're watching the news, which I noticed because I've been watching the news a lot lately because at the time of the recording today is Inauguration Eve. So I've been glued to CNN and MSNBC. And what I've noticed is that they'll have these correspondents come in and even some of the key people who are at the desk talking about everything, because they're processing so much information, you hear a lot of irritants. And the people who've done it really for a long time, like I can think of Rachel Maddow, Anderson Cooper, the amazing and wonderful Don Lemon that I just have like the biggest soul crush on, absolutely. You're so optimistic. I have a card for you. <laughs> they have a lot less of these. 
because they're used to it and they can catch themselves as they go. But it's hard when you're thinking live and on the spot. Well, you notice them a lot of times is in the people that they're bringing on to speak who aren't as used to showing up live and speaking in an eloquent, good, confident way without all these irritants. So what are irritants? Irritants can be sounds like lip smacking or clicking or sniffling, right? Anytime you're like, you hear somebody who kind of sounds like they have a tick like that, that's just driving you crazy. But also they can be sounds like um or er. They're, they're not actual words and they just fill up space. These are the things that we really want to get out of our video. They're the things that just fill it up, undercut us, make us sound unprofessional, make us sound like we don't know what we're doing and like we're not confident. So now we have three out of the four. The last one has to do with your voice itself. These are two elements called upspeak and vocal fry. If these are new concepts to you, don't worry, I'm totally gonna dig into it. Upspeak is a little bit culturally dependent. So if you're from the UK or if you're from Australia, there's a little more upspeak that you're entitled to than the US, for example. But upspeak is when our intonation at the end of a sentence tends to go up. That's upspeak. And what it does is it undercuts your authority in the way that you're showing up because it makes it sound like everything you're saying is a question. And when everything you're saying sounds like a question, it doesn't make you sound confident at all. That said, certain dialects, it is more natural for them. If you're in the UK, for example, or if you're in Australia, there's a certain amount of it that might just be a part of the dialect and what's considered normal. So put this through your own kind of filter. But generally speaking, when we want to affect a message, when we want to sound confident, we wanna have that anchoring at the end of a sentence. So instead of it going up, we wanna keep it low. We wanna keep it level so it sounds like we really know what we're talking about. The other one is vocal fry. And some voices are a little more like this. I tend to have a fair amount of vocal fry just naturally, thanks so much. But vocal fry is when your vocal cords are, when you're speaking a little bit more like this and it starts to grate. And a great example of vocal fry is in the Kardashian clan, which I love by the way. So if you wanna shade on them, think again, because I love the Kardashians. But Courtney, for example, really has this vocal fry when she talks. Hi AD, I'm Courtney Kardashian. Welcome to my kid's playhouse. Now, if you think about combining of speak and vocal fry, that's when we get what's typically understood as like the valley accent when it's like something really interesting that you're saying. <laughs> so when you think about the images that that brings to mind, it really isn't somebody with authority or power or somebody that you really wanna listen to long-term. So now you know about the four horsemen, these four factors that can really slide in there and make you sound more annoying, can make you sound less confident. What do we do? How do we know what our things are? You're not gonna like me for telling you this, I promise. But what you really need to do is record yourself and then watch it. It is painful. And if you are not used to it, you are gonna hate the way you sound. You're probably gonna think you're a dork and you're gonna judge yourself, all the things. Instead of evaluating your who you are and how good you are, whatever, because none of that matters. And even if you're starting in a place that's suboptimal compared to where you wanna be, doing this process, you were gonna grow and get better. So the version of you today is not gonna be the version of you in six months. That said, watching yourself on video is the only way to really start to clock what is going on that's undercutting your ability to authentically communicate. You might have even counted in this video, there are some things for me that I tend to go to, but overall I've been able to strip most of that out so that it's not really detracting from my point and what I'm saying. You can still resonate with it and you're not hearing these uh, ums all the time. So you're ready for homework? I know, you're gonna love me. But my homework for you is to record a two minute video where you're talking about something and make it so that you don't have a script, you're just having to think from your brain. That's what will genuinely trigger these kinds of 
irritants, modifiers, vocal fry, upspeak, all of that stuff to bubble to the surface. Then watch it back two times. The first time to just sit in the discomfort. <laughs> and then the second time to really count what's going on and what you're seeing. Once you know what these things are, it becomes so empowering because then you know what to listen for. They take it out of the invisible realm that's undercutting your authority and you make it visible, you understand. And the great example for me is how much I say so and how much I say right. There are things that are just ingrained in what I do, but because I've trained my brain to listen for them because I know what they are, as soon as I hear them, I can do another take. So that's all I have for you today. I actually wanted to dig into the five monsters, which are things that really help you be more charismatic in video. But I already feel like this video is long enough and we should break that out into a whole separate video. So if I get, let's say more than 200 likes on this, I will make that video. So let me know in the comments if that's something you want. Lastly, before we get going, I just wanna say in case you haven't heard it today, you're amazing. You're brilliant. And whatever you have inside of you, that thing that you're like a little bit nervous about, that idea that you might wanna try, that is the only thing you need to listen to. And yes, you might also have the voice of fear trying to tell you what you should, what you shouldn't do, what you're good at, what you're not. But that little voice inside of you, if you listen to that and are able to show up, that's true boldness. And that is something that we have to cultivate in ourselves, but that's something only you can do, only you can know. But just trust me, you're a beautiful human. You are totally lovable. You have greatness inside of you. And I am super excited to see what you're going to do in the world. Just be sure to tag me so I can see it, you know, and cheer you on because any content that we're contributing to the world that comes from a place of love and excitement is going to make the world a better place. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye.